All right, g'day guys. Welcome back to the True Footy YouTube channel. I'm joined once again by Druzy, and today we're going to take you through some of the best modern day AFL rivalries. It's not just modern day, it's kind of looking at sort of the context of maybe the last 20 to 30 years, looking at what some of the real rivalries are in the AFL, because I don't know about you, Drews, but I kind of feel like the, the cliche ones are, the derby comes to mind, but also, you know, you Carlton Collingwood's, uh, Collingwood Richmond's as well. I think modern day, other than maybe like the Anzac Day clash, they don't have too much significance. Everyone's shitting on the uh, season opener every year. What do you make of those big Victorian clashes? I think that's a good point that you make, Jesse. It's not the two big fan bases that necessarily make for a big game. We're looking into the games that are so rich in rivalry just because of the games that have been played between the two sides. So there's some that you might not expect in there, but Jesse and I have done thorough research for this video, and we're going to tell you why these rivalries are so deep. Yep, so it's hard to come up with a perfect criteria for this. Um, obviously, it's a little bit subjective, but I've tried to pick the biggest ones over the last few years, taking into account you know how much the clubs actually hate each other, what the results mean uh, each time they play, and also just how quality the games have been, because there's a number of games on here where the two teams just trade amazing clashes. So we're going to start off number one, and I'm going to go against what I said and say we're not necessarily going traditional, but I am going to nominate the showdown here, because mm -hmm. this one between Port Adelaide and Adelaide, uh, it transcends, you know, just being a geographical rivalry when you compare it to, you know, the, the Q clash is a bit of a joke of a rivalry. Uh, the Western Derby, we've talked about it. We trade winning streaks. It's mm -hmm. not really the same thing, but Port and Adelaide as well also seem to really hate each other, particularly the fans online. Port Adelaide actually won the first showdown, which is kind of surprising. They're the younger Crazy. side. Um, but, you know, Adelaide got theirs back. They actually won the flag that year, which kind of makes that really interesting. Wow. Yeah, that, that is crazy. But that shows, like, sometimes the rivalries, like, take the form out of the game, like, ladder positions out of the game. That's what good rivalries do. It's the, the players on the field, they hate each other, and the best side doesn't always win. Head to head, these two sides are really even. Again, unlike the Derby. <laughs> <laughs> Amazingly though, these teams have faced 48 times and split at 24 each. We are about to record this before Showdown 49, so mm -hmm. uh, I'd imagine Port Adelaide is going to sneak ahead tonight. But either way, you can see how like evenly matched the two sides have been uh, both pretty successful clubs, you'd have to say, and always a must watch. Here's another one that runs back in time, Jesse. It's Geelong and Hawthorne. Now, in recent memory, Geelong lost to Hawthorne in 2008 when Hawthorne come in as the underdogs. The Fats should be due come in and <laughs> mm. had the game of his life. But the reason that I love this rivalry so much, it's it has a place in history for me. The 1989 Grand Final, Geelong versus Hawthorne. One of the best teams that never won a Grand Final in Geelong at the time with the best player of all time, Gary Ablett Sr. I think he kicked like a bag. I think he kicked, kicked six or five or no, six. I think he kicked nine. Wow, that's two bags. Gary Ablett kicked nine in that game. Um, it was neck and neck. I think it was six points Hawthorne come out on top in that that game. Brereton had five goals and had a broken rib yeah, as well. Yeah, so that was that game that obviously that Geelong players went into Brereton off the ball and just fucked him up pretty much. Leading into that game, there was a fierce rivalry. Everyone knew that would that would be fireworks and the game lived up to it. And then to again play in 2008, another grand final. But it's a game that because of the rivalry over the years, it's got a fixture every year now, the Easter Monday game. And that's a game that I everyone looks forward to. I, in particular, look forward to that game every season. Um, and it was close again this year, although Geelong didn't really show up. So yeah, it's a rivalry that has been entrenched in AFL history. The fascinating thing about after that 2008 Grand Finals, what they kicked off, I think they call it the Kennett Curse. They played each other 11 times, and Geelong won all 11 of the next clashes after that Grand Final. And Hawthorne were a very handy side, um, mm. obviously winning the flag in uh, 2013 to 15 as well. And nine of those 11 clashes, I think, were, were decided by less than 10 points. So um, always a good clash, even though Geelong were getting the chocolates. Next up, a rivalry very close to my heart, Drew's in. Maybe not one that's in a modern context, like really relevant anymore, but we do no rivalry video is like completely without this one. Sydney versus West Coast is an all-time rivalry, uh, not only because of the closeness, it was record-breaking in, in, in terms of how close the games were, but also the significance of like over the six games that they played, the cumulative margin was 13 points and four of them were finals and two of them were grand finals. It was fitting that uh, they both teams split the grand finals uh, one each mm -hmm. uh, because I think either side going 2-0 and in those grand finals would have been a bit of an injustice on the other team. So mm -hmm. it, was a, it was a real rivalry built on mutual respect. And I think there were three consecutive one-point clashes, the qualifying final, the grand final of 06, and then round one 2007 was one point. So 13 points across six games, it's a record. And the next closest cumulative margin record is dating back to like, 100 years previous and it was wow. 28 so more than double fuck it now nowadays Sydney love clapping our cheeks into oblivion uh, but either way that rivalry will live on in infamy it was the first AFL rivalry I was really made aware of living in WA having friends and family that support West Coast yeah those grand finals are the best and worst days of those people's lives the players that made up those teams like Ben Cousins Chris Judd Adam Goods Daniel Kerr yeah wow 
I mean, some greats of the game were in those teams and some of the best games of football were played across that period. Hawthorne versus Sydney. Two teams we've already talked about in this video, but they were also fierce rivals throughout that like early to mid pens period. Um, just because they were so good at that time that they were meeting up in such crucial contests in finals. Grand final in 2012, a great grand final. Sydney come out on top. Hawthorne obviously went on the three-peat, but Sydney were there or thereabouts that whole period as well. The second off the three-peat was obviously against Sydney. I can't I can't really remember much of that grand final. Was it a fierce contest? Like, it was one of the first grand finals I've missed in my life, and uh, Hawthorne won by 10 goals. But yeah, either way, okay. the fact that these two t teams were meeting in such big finals showed like the how both of them were like absolute mega dogs of the <laughs> <laughs> I think they played in the finals four years consecutively from 2011 all the way to that 2014 grand final as well. And again, great players scattered throughout this rivalry. Lance Franklin, who's played for both teams now. Modern day greats have played in this rivalry. Um, and it's a rivalry that we'll look back on in years to come and know, like, yeah, this was a fucking great rivalry with all-time great players. Yep, some very big players to play for both sides during and after that era as well. Lance Franklin, who you mentioned, uh, obviously played in a grand final for either side. Uh, Josh Kennedy was a father-son for Hawthorne, got traded to Sydney. Hawthorne got their own back by trading Tom Mitchell, a father-son from Sydney, to the Hawks, and he won a brown low for him. Yeah, this game, uh, in addition to all the finals, there was a lot of good close home and away fixtures as well. Always a big matchup because of where these two sides were on the ladder, and it was a weird one where the away team would often win. The fifth rivalry that we're going to highlight is between the Brisbane Lions and Collingwood. Again, one that's kind of faded in recent memory, but this one goes back to kind of like the 90s. Even, you know, when you consider the fact that Fitzroy, uh, who obviously merged with Brisbane to become the Brisbane Lions, they were the neighbouring sort of like suburb to Collingwood, so there was a bit of a geographical tension there. Mm -hmm. um, but also that when the Brisbane Bears... They had Nathan Buckley on their list for a year. Nathan Buckley then requested a trade specifically to Collingwood because he wanted to play in finals and win flags. And then famously, <laughs> Brisbane beat them in the 02 and 03 grand final, the first two grand finals I ever watched. So uh, yeah, a bit of um, bit of rivalry going on there. Buckley's been shafted in his <laughs> AFL career for one of the all-time great players. Like for him to say, like, I'm leaving Brisbane to go to Collingwood. Mm. And then yeah, losing two grand finals. But yeah, to that Brisbane side, that rivalry was so fierce because Brisbane in that early 2000s period were one of the greatest teams of all time. Again, before my time, I can't say I watched these games, but can you remember much of this this rivalry um, and what did you make of it? Yeah, definitely. Uh, Brisbane and Collingwood were, and sort of Port Adelaide in that early 2000s period, um, they were the uh, the mega dogs, one <laughs> might say. <laughs> yeah, the first grand final I ever watched was a great one, 2002. Mm -hmm. I remember Ackermanis snapping the winner go winning goal and they would win by nine points. The next year, uh, Collingwood showed up and I, if I'm not mistaken, Collingwood were favourites and Brisbane won by 50 points. So, wow. Yeah, but I mean, even before that, I believe there was a big game in 1999 where the Lions beat Collingwood to consign them to their first ever wooden spoon. So wow. there's been some big games in this rivalry. It's not so much relevant anymore, but you have to acknowledge that little period. So a modern day rivalry, one that everyone knows about because it's so recent. It's the Bulldogs versus GWS. Geographically, nothing between them. So obviously this rival is entrenched in the games that have been played and the hatred between the players, which has been noted by Dill Buckley on his podcast, an ex-GWS player, and he noted that GWS and Bulldogs hate each other. Yeah, Dill Buckley is a player that has played for Carlton as well, so he's been involved with those clashes against Essendon he's, uh, and Collingwood and Richmond, of course, as well. But he reckons that this is the two teams that hate each other the most. That clash at Giant Stadium 2016 prelim, one of the best prelims of all time when that fairy tale story of the Bulldogs Premiership occurred. That game, they run away by what, three points in the Six end? Points, Six points. Six points. Yeah. Very close game. Um, and yet, that probably fueled the rivalry going forward. Funnily enough, Tom Boyd, one of GWS's top draft picks in the year prior, goes to the Bulldogs, stunk it up for the Giants, goes to the Bulldogs, has the best season of his life and wins a premiership, which is just a, another story to this tale. Yeah, I think that prelim might have even been voted the best game of the decade at one point. Well, I, I don't know if that got superseded like since then, but yeah, that, that game sort of lives on in the memory of a lot of people. And like you say, a lot of big players played for both clubs. Alan Ward famously came from the Bulldogs. Uh, Ryan Griffin uh, was part of that Tom Boyd trade as well, and that Tom Boyd trade won the Dogs a flag. So, yeah. yeah, pretty significant. The Dogs have sort of dropped off since the grand final. Um, obviously, they come in at the eighth seed, but they still lead the series 8-6, to six, even though GWS have probably been better in that period after. 8-6, um, to six, so it's sort of neck and neck. Um, and, yeah, it's a clash that everyone looks forward to every year. The seventh rivalry we're going to nominate is me putting my biased Eagles hat on, but I do think this one is worth mentioning uh, in recent memory because of the significance of some of these games. So I'm going to talk about West Coast versus Collingwood. That one is one for sure. If you're hating on it, clap your mum. Oh my god. 
So other than the fact that these two are sort of two of the biggest clubs in the AFL are on opposite sides of the country, um, there's not too much of a connection. I think everyone thinks they have a rivalry with Collingwood because people tend to hate them. But th- from 2018 onward, there's no doubt the clashes between these two sides have been amazing. Obviously, the 2018 qualifying final was a really good win. The Eagles won by 16 points, kind of ran away with it because Collingwood led. 2018 grand final speaks for itself. Then in 2019, Collingwood came over with their backs against the wall, beat us in Perth by a point. And then, of course, the 2020 elimination final did the exact same thing, won by points. In regular season games, Eagles seem to have the cherries, though. Like, the last two at Optus, West Coast have flogged Collingwood. Um, I remember, was it 2019? Maybe it was 2018 when you went to the G and you won quite comfortably as well. Both years, yeah. Um, but yeah, Collingwood seemed to lift in these these finals, except for the grand final. But to come to Perth and to sneak results, like not many teams can do that, um, which just speaks to the rivalry of this mm-hmm. game. That's right. So it's worth mentioning because of the significance of these games. We've had like three finals clashes, one grand final in there, two teams at the top of their powers. It's a rivalry built on mutual respect. I think Eagles and Collingwood fans sort of see each other for what we are. And mm-hmm. um, it's always a really fun clash, although maybe not enjoyable during the the game. Now Colling was starting to drop off. We might see the end of this rivalry, but it was sweet while it lasted. Alright, here's one that's going to throw everyone off. Gold Coast and St. Kilda. Mm. Now, this is just entrenched in the last few results because they've been so close. Let me read them out for you. They played today, nine points. Big punch on at halftime. Mm. Big scrap. A big double leg on Dan Butler. I'm not sure who threw him, but this game had heat in it. You could see that the teams hated each other. It was feisty. There was several like moments where they had to break up the uh, all the tension and the, and the fighting. It was weird. Tuke Miller, bloody concussed uh, Caulfield, was it as well? Yeah, every contest, it just looked like there was going to be a punch up in the, in the middle of it. So these teams obviously do not like each other. Today was nine points, so very close. But the last four results have been four points, four points, one point, and two points. So across five games, the average was four. That's pretty wild. And I think at least one of them in there, St. Kilda came back from like six goals down in a really good game. I think it was the end of 2018, mm. a really significant result. So yeah, always a classic match when these two sides meet, which is weird because yeah, like, uh, consider where Gold Coast are, they always <laughs> take it up to St. Kilda. St Kilda have obviously been on the rise quite quickly over the last few years and Gold Coast more of a slow burn but the talent is starting to manifest there on the Gold Coast so going forward this could potentially be a a rivalry that we can see in finals and whatnot being played in bigger games on bigger stages Um, but at the moment I'm enjoying it for what it is. Alright guys that wraps up the eight rivals we nominate as the best in the game right now. Let us know in the comments what you thought of our nominations and also some that you think we missed. We thought about you know including Anzac Day but you know I think the Anzac Day rivalry kind of it's more about Anzac Day transcending the actual contest between those two sides yeah. other than the fact that they're traditional football clubs so that's why we left that out and a few others but let us know in the comments why you think we're wrong thanks for all your support lately on the channel the channel is thriving uh, do go check out Drewzy's channel if you haven't already link in the description and subscribe to True Footy if you haven't already I make content that's almost as good as Jesse's <laughs> thanks guys we'll see you in the next one bye cat is on the hunt for those birds yeah it's like bush on a Saturday night <laughs>